you pick your prime minister first. Okay. Because that way I know what to do next. Because <laughs> I have one okay. A, one B. Okay. I did kind and if of. You pick my A. I'm just like, Pfft. well, I can't argue with that. Okay. But you pick anybody else, I'm, I'm going to destroy you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. Just let you know. Welcome back to Poutine Politics, Canadian Issues Served with Cheese Curds. My name's Adam. My name's Mike. And today, we are going to talk about who we think is the best prime minister ever. A present or a former, and, well, not future, because we don't know who the next prime minister is. Oh, it's, it's going to be Derek Sloan. Come on. <laughs> not the person I thought you were going to say. <laughs> Adam messaged me earlier on the week and came up with a brilliant idea of we should pick our own greatest prime minister. I was like, yeah, that's great. So I've come up with uh, a very narrow list and I'm going to let Adam uh, fall on the sword first so I can either say that that's the greatest choice ever or that he's an absolute schmuck. Go ahead, Adam. All right. So the first the first thing I want to do here to kind of give you the idea of why I'm like, this is what I, this is what I want to talk about. Okay. And it has nothing to do with anything that's going on right now, but I was at, I, w I was seeing I was out to see a client and I guess we got talking about obviously all the different things going on with the you know the COVID programs and blah 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 this and blah blah that and this guy is like a he's a he's a Trudeau hater basically he's not like he's not like vitriolic about it or anything like that but he just like it he just doesn't like Trudeau he can't really explain okay. it he just doesn't like him he grew but, up in the seventies uh, older than that the guy he's in his late he's in his late sixties okay so he was around the seventies. Yeah. yeah, that's typical. So, yeah, yeah, probably, exactly. Um, well, if you're a certain demographic, you, you hate Trudeau. Yes. But it was the follow-up comment that really made me want to do this topic. And the follow-up okay. comment from him was that he believes that Stephen Harper was the best prime minister that this country has ever had. <laughs> Why? Because he... What did he do? Exactly. Like I, I, don't, I don't mean I don't, I don't I don't mean that to be mean or angry or anything like that. I mean, it's like comparing Harper to Crutchin. What did they do? Yeah. Right. Like, what groundbreaking legislation did they bring in? What did they do that was so spectacular than the other? Like I've I I consider Harper and Crutchin almost the same. Like two sides in court. Like obviously they had liberal takes on things and one had conservative takes on things, but really they didn't do anything significant. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that's and I'm like I'm like I can't think of a prime minister since I've been born, let's say, that really would fall into that category, right? Like I mean, okay, did Brian Mulroney win the the largest majority ever? Yes. In 1984. So obviously I was like not even 1 year old when that happened. So I'm not going to remember that, but that wasn't the point of this. That wasn't the point of this uh conversation either, right? Like and that's why I said no. look at all of the prime ministers that have been around uh, since Confederation, and pick the one that you think it did the best, basically. But yeah, so th this is this is where this conversation comes from. Is when he, is when this client said that uh, he thinks Stephen Harper's been the, or has been the best prime minister that uh, we've ever had. And I'm just, you know, I, because it's because it's a client and things. I'm like, I can't. I'm just, okay, yeah, hmm, huh, that's interesting. That's, that's, that's interesting. Um, okay, yeah. can't say anything. Come listen to my podcast in about three weeks. Okay, perfect. exactly, perfect. So when I was so when I was going through the list of prime ministers, so I so I mean I I did essentially eliminate the majority of the prime ministers before the Second World War. Okay, now this from you know from things that we know about them and and have learned about them and uh, the things that they did, you know whether it was. Um, you know the the segregation and the and the elimination essentially of indigenous people and people of other minority race uh, minorities races so on and so forth yeah, and and the reason why I'm like well I don't feel like any of them can really fall into a position of being the best prime minister that we've ever had is because those were those were government choices it wasn't necessarily like the person themselves was like well I don't like them but I'm going to do things as a as a parliamentarian, as a as a politician that supports them because they deserve to be supported, kind of thing, right? It was like, a, no, this is this is government policy, right? You think about things like the like the RC, like creation of the RCMP and the residential schools and uh, the Northwest Rebellion and things like that. I kind of look at all of all of those kinds of things happening through the late 
1800s and early 1900s and basically say that the majority of those prime ministers should be disqualified for their roles in those in those items okay, okay. which got me to you know essentially from uh, Mackenzie King forward I'm like okay those are the people that I should probably the prime ministers that I should probably look at from my point of view and say it's someone from this group that I think is probably the best okay so who do you think I picked well, I'm not telling you his squad. You're not going to tell him his squad. Okay. All right. I know who you should have picked. <laughs> That's the same conversation. Okay. So so you told me that you have you have like two that you looked at. I have one A and one B. You have one A and one B. And the only reason I have one B is because if you pick one A, well, I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, and uh, we have nothing to topic. Okay, fair enough. I think I think in the end result, I have one A and one B as well. And I think a lot of it has to do with their, their work in creating the... Uh, beginnings uh, of the stronger social safety net in the country. So I would say that my 1A is Louis Saint Laurent and my 1B is Lester Pearson. Oh, God. Laurent? Really? Yeah. It's Pearson. It has to be Pearson. It has to not be even Pearson? close. Okay. Not even close. Why is it not even close? Essentially, all of the main social programs that we use, he created. Okay. He was not a politician because he wanted to be a politician. All right. And I think that's a key indicator. Like, if you want to be a politician because you want to be a politician, usually I'm like, well, you have alternate motives. You want to be the limelight. So are you doing the, what's in the best interest of the country or are you doing what's in the best interest of you? And there's a lot of prime ministers that you could say, I know what you're doing. You want to be a prime minister. You don't necessarily want to do what's right for the country. And I can think of the last two prime ministers and go, yep, both of you qualify. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Easily qualify for that, right? Right. And what he did, and you can even, like, I mean, you can say, well, he didn't do that. Well, I mean, he won the Nobel Peace Prize for his, he created the Blue Berets. Right. Okay. So now, uh, th- and that, I mean, was, that was, that was one of the things where I'm like, I think Pearson could be, could be above Laurent in my eyes. But the reason why I chose Laurent over Pearson was, okay, so the, I, I, the Nobel Peace Prize, big thing, it did technically happen before he became prime minister or as a result of things he did before he was prime minister so that's why i was like uh, okay do i count that as part of as as part of him being prime minister i probably shouldn't just because it occurred beforehand right so the reason why and and you're right that pearson pearson's prime ministership led to you know like a canada pension plan and and uh, and the health canada act and you know those different social safety nets and things like that the reason why i picked laurent though is that during while he was prime minister some of those programs got their start and Pearson was part of his cabinet d- while he was prime minister. So in a way, I kind of look at it as Pearson almost continued on with some of the things that Louis Saint Laurent started. And that was why that was kind of the thing to me that barely, barely puts Laurent over the edge in my point of view. That's how close I feel they are. Um, but I feel like because, you know, whether it was old age, old age pensions, the start of the federal government supporting uh, the provinces in regards to uh, health care costs, uh, the start of, uh, of uh, the equalization payments and transfer payment systems happened under, under Laurent. Uh, form- you know, he was, he was there with the formation of NATO in the United Nations, depending on how you feel about th- those organizations. And... Uh, kind of helping with the beginnings of the peacekeeping forces with the United Nations. So it was it's it was those kinds of things that I was looking at and saying, again, you know, again, it's just barely. But because those things happened while he was prime minister and he was he, he was he was an important part, uh, influential in those decisions, that that was why I put him slightly above Pearson. No, nah, it shouldn't be close. You don't think it should be close? <laughs> should be that close. Okay. All right. Pearson put through all those reforms, like those finished reforms. Yes, Laurent may have started it, but he put them through. Okay. And he put them through with a minority government. Well, and I mean, yes, you're right. And, and this, that's huge. So, so I have to I have to admit, okay, I was I was thinking about pulling a fast one on this one and saying oh, okay. and saying that the best prime minister, um, although he was never the prime minister, was Tommy Douglas. <laughs> <laughs> you could make the argument that Tommy Douglas was, but Tommy Douglas was the the father of of those different things. But he didn't do every like no. Pearson was a, a better peacemaker. We didn't go to Vietnam, right? 
We went to Korea. Yes. Laurent was a, was part of Korea. He would have been, yeah. I actually was wondering if you're going to pick King. Like, no, 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 no. I mean, he's our longest serving prime minister, but I don't. I definitely would not have said that he was he was one of the best. <laughs> now, Pearson, I still say Pearson's the best. Like, there's no question in my mind about that. Okay. Uh, simply because of what he did, and you know our flag. Yeah. That's Pearson. That's Pearson. Right. Like, yep. there's so many things that you can be like, okay, Pearson did that, 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 and that. Oh wow. If you look at lists, and this is what drives me nuts, because I looked at the McCain's list. Have you seen the McCain's list of top prime ministers? I decided to avoid it. Uh, I oh, know that you really have to look at it. Who if you they... ever want to see I'm biased to... liberal coverage, just look at that well, list. Well, who did they put at number one? King. They did put it, him at number one. I thought I read somewhere. Yes. I thought I read on that they didn't put him as number one. One one of the three times they've done it, they oh, okay. put him at number one. Right. Ranking Canada's um, best and worst prime ministers. This one's from 2016. Yeah. But look how many liberal people there are on that list. Well, yeah, well, liberal, liberal. <laughs> but like Johnny McDonald because he was the first. Like, I don't even think John McDonald was that good. <laughs> no. Gotta, I mean, right. got to admit, the score was close, though, because, it, well, close-ish, I guess. It was out of five. But you're right. I mean, liberal, I liberal. Liberal, 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 conservative, liberal, 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 conservative, 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 and liberal. Pearson's liberal. way the heck down there. Pearson is... Fifth. Fifth, yeah. What? Do you guys know what you're doing? Well, maybe it has maybe yeah. it has to do with the fact that it was he was uh it was a minority. It was always under a minority for him. Who I don't cares? Know. I don't think it matters either. I mean he won both of the elections that he that he was part of. Yeah, here's the thing. King lost a whole bunch oh, no, of elections sorry. too. Sorry, oh, sorry. Because Pearson was in Pearson was in the elections with Stephen Baker. So no, Pearson did not win all of the elections. No, he didn't win that's he right. didn't win his first election. He no. lost it and then he won a second election. Yeah. That's right. And the guy had a lisp, so it wasn't like he was a great order. But you see what I'm saying? Like, that it's just like, why is this list so skewed to liberal? Like, if this was an accurate reflection, it looks like as if the Conservative Party was just the worst for Canada. And it's like, it's not the worst. Well, maybe right, right? now. <laughs> maybe that's part of the problem okay, is that this vote, this vote happened in 2016. And maybe people's thoughts on Conservatives were kind of down at that point. No, no, you can go back to the other list. I was saying. Oh, like older presence. lists? Oh, okay. Yeah, even the 1999 ones. Like, <laughs> what are you doing? It is interesting at on this. So this was, so this particular list was uh, a year posted a year after Justin Trudeau was elected, and they had him down as the best short-term prime minister. Not with a great <laughs> score, mind you, because it was out of five, and his score was 3.27, uh, and then followed by Paul Martin at 2.33 out of five. Um, Again, like. <laughs> And and poor poor Kim Campbell, she came in last out Listen, of all of them. <laughs> I always want to give Kim and Campbell a little bit more credit than than uh, she got. I mean, yeah, she got absolutely massacred. Well, it wasn't I her mean, fault. It, no, it wasn't her fault. Of course not. It's, oh, here you go. By the way, we've made all these bad decisions, and now you're the leader. Uh, what? <laughs> right? Like, we're gonna make sure that we upset both the East and West at the exact same time. Yeah, that's impressively bad. Yes. Okay. Well, I mean, like, I, I, and again, I guess this is where I'm, I'm so close between my two choices that I feel like maybe I could, I could flip or sw or whatever. But I, again, I mean, I, like I said, I, I think in the end result, I picked Laurent Laurent's because done. he's not bad. He, and I feel like he started the, he started the, he started the conversation in regards to the social, pro, social safety net. Uh, hey, he brought Newfoundland into Confederation too. Come on, man. Newfoundland. Yeah, whatever. I might give you bonus points from Newfoundland. What? I find that offensive, and I'm not even from Newfoundland. <laughs> <laughs> Laurent. Okay, Laurent. Okay, Laurent's not a bad prime minister. Like, I'm not saying that. Okay. You will not hear me say that. Laurent is a great prime minister. Okay. To say he started a conversation. Okay, and right, like lots of people start a conversation. Like that, like saying Brian Maroney uh, started the conversation about making sure that all the promises agree. Yeah, and he failed well, magnificently. He, he failed the court. Yeah, he failed at that. I wouldn't. I wouldn't necessarily say that Laurent failed at what he was doing. But he didn't succeed, though. Like, well, I think he succeed. I think he succeeded on parts of it, and then, like I said, I think I think Pearson followed through on the rest of it. Pearson put it through. Yeah, I count the person that actually put it through, right? <laughs> I don't count the person that kind of did it. I count the person that did it. Okay, I'm telling you, he did some of it. 
because like I said, he introduced Some he introduced old age old age pensions. He introduced the, he introduced the federal health transfers. He introduced the the equalization system. Uh, he introduced he introduced. Um, it was something about it was something about not a not like an old age security thing exactly, but almost like a pension payment or a, or a, or a a disability payment as it were for for people who were blind. So that, again, like he, yeah, there it is. Yes, uh, introduction, there, there yeah. Are... So, so, intro, so, uh, introduction of old age assistance for Canadians age sixty five and old and above. Universalization of old age pensions for all Canadians age seventy and above. Introduction of allow, introdu, uh, bleh, introduction mm. of allowances for the blind and the disabled. Uh, amendments to the National Housing Act, which provided federal government financing to nonprofit organizations as well as the provinces, uh, b- b- and unemployment assistance for unemployed employables on welfare who had exhausted their EI or UI at the time benefits. So, and I'll, and I'll frame it this way: mm-hmm. you may be putting him at one A, one B. I'm putting him at four or five. Okay, that's all I'm saying. Okay, like I'm not, we're splitting here, right? I mean, you could go Pearson, Laurent, Borden. I think I'm done. <laughs> I, I was like, wait, who else? No, no, he's terrible. I mean, King comes in the second tier. It's hard to even John A. McDonald because he's the founder. Yeah, we can put him in the second tier, whatever. It's hard to um, it's hard to even do like a top five, right? <laughs> yeah, I only, I only have three. There, you get some of the people that that love Trudeau, and then you get some people that hate Trudeau. But there's just too many things that Trudeau did that I'm like that I just can't ignore. Right. How many times has the War Time Act been enacted? The War, three oh, times? the War Measures Act. I think the yeah, War Measures Act. I think it's only been enacted once. Three. Are you sure? World War One. World oh, War II. sorry. Yeah. Okay. Ni- yes. In 1970. Yes, the October Crisis. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, we were at war in 1970. Well, there was a war going on somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Trudeau. So, like I said, Trudeau's not necessarily. I don't think he's, he was like the worst, but he wasn't that great. But like you look at McLean's and then one like, oh, he's just so great. Yeah, because he's flamboyant and you like to look at him, look at what all of his grand spectacle. But I mean, what did he do? Another one that I think gets slighted way too frequently is Joe Clark. Right. Because Joe Clark was in a no win scenario. Right. And he did the right things. So he should be higher up on the short term list. He's one of the ones that I think should be like one or two on the short term. I don't think he was that great a prime minister overall because I mean, he didn't. He wasn't even there was, for a year. Right? Like, But he had to make tough decisions, and he made those tough decisions. Right. So I, I, just a, one of the interesting things that reading with, with Trudeau, let's say with, with, with PET, I, I was reading about him just because I'm doing the research that I was doing for this and kind of like, okay, I know there's, a, like I said, I, I know there's a whole bunch of people I can cut out and be like, yeah, they're not going to make my list no matter what. Um, right. Yeah, of course. But I mean, it was, I, I hacked a lot of people off. Yeah. But it was, it was, it was kind of reading about the whole thought of... Uh, how much people complain uh, about how much he added to the debt while he was prime minister, how much he added to the national debt, and not not even thinking about it because of uh, because of a good chunk of the time that he was prime minister, but the fact that during during a good chunk of time when he was prime minister, uh, there were a lot of financial issues around the world, and again, just kind of like now and two thousand eight, Canada wasn't the only country that was uh, suffering financially. Right, and so so much yeah. gets, so much gets put on him for adding so much money to the debt, but you know, like there was the two there were the two oil crises in the in the seventies, and that caused a lot of issues in the United States as well and in Europe, and uh, like I understand why we have such a limited view when we complain about things that we don't like, but. You almost need that that wider view of the world, especially when you're talking about world leaders, to say, oh, well, I mean, okay, yeah, things looked bad here, but things look bad everywhere, right? Yeah, you want to you want to use the error of measuring stick. Yeah. So your choice was Pearson. My choice was Laurent. Yours was Pearson by a mile. Mine was Laurent by like an inch. Yeah. Well, that is a look at our uh, favorite prime minister. Well. Best prime minister, not favorite prime minister, because I think, I, again, I think even those two terms have different meanings. So, uh, yeah, we'll favorite say, means the one that you like the most. Yes, the, exactly. The one you think the best. All right. Anyways, so who we believe were the best prime ministers in the history of Canada from Poutine politics. My name's Adam. My name's Mike. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs> <laughs>